Nancy lingered a bit, looking longingly toward the space through which she had entered the forest and felt a burning desire to do so again. Well, not right now, maybe later, she told herself, and continued following her wilting companions who by this time were about 50 yards ahead of her. Suddenly Nancy felt a tingling on the back of her neck as if someone had eyes on her. Looking over her left shoulder back up the hill, she saw that someone was watching her. It turned out to be the medicine woman who had visited the camp and talked about her interactions with elephants and the lifetime as Tusk. Nancy froze in place. Do I go up there? I don't understand her language. What would I say? The motionless old hag continued to gaze at her. Nancy began to feel very sleepy, overwhelmingly tired. I believe I cannot take another step. I've got to sit down right here, sun or no sun. And thinking those strange thoughts, Nancy collapsed like a lead weight in the middle of the hill, while a small wisp of cloud floated overhead until it hid the sun from her just enough to cool her down. Slipping into her dream world, falling, falling asleep, Nancy found herself standing in front of the medicine woman, though now she saw this ancient figure as young, vibrant, and powerful, though it was obviously the same person. I've taken you into the realm of spirit to talk with you. Here you have no need of knowing my language. Here we simply understand each other. I have two messages to give you. You may decide to listen and follow, surrendering yourself to your own plan, or you may make the decision to resist yourself. Whatever you decide is important only to you. I am simply the messenger. The beautiful, shimmering young woman instilled the words within Nancy's mind. The first message is this. You were drawn to this country because your life as Tusk desires fulfillment in this here and now. You may complete this yearning or you may ignore it. If you decide to forget it, you will return with vigor in another incarnation. This you cannot escape. If you make the decision to complete the experience in this time and space, you will find much that is familiar will be taken from you. It must be this way for you to interface with Tusk in his here and now. The second message is a bit more complex. Your brother Paul is part of the unfolding of these parallel realities. If you decide to embrace your life as Tusk in his conscious reality and merge it within your awareness as Nancy, you will be changing the outcome of Paul's present life as well. If you decide to ignore these messages and simply live your life as you have until this moment, Paul's incarnation will not experience the mergence with your present life any more than it already is. In other words, all will continue progressing from the observational viewpoint you are already experiencing. Neither decision is either right or wrong. It is simply a crossroad point and this is the moment of your decision. You must give me your answer now. There is no space for deliberation. This is the moment of possible surrender to your own plan. Nancy stood speechless. She was going to influence Paul's life by her decision. Yet she knew in her heart what the answer must be. There was no doubt. I surrender to Nancy as Tusk and Tusk as Nancy in this space and time and I have no idea what that means.